So in 2018, I drove the Lexus RX 350L, and that was the first time they had the L line in the RX. If you don't know, traditionally the RX has been a two row SUV, but with the L line, they've extended the platform and they've entered the space of the luxury three row SUV. So our question here is, did they do a good job entering that space of the luxury three row SUV? Well, let's jump into it and find out. So first quickly, let's talk about what's new for 2020 and the RX line. First off, now you have Android Auto integration standard on all 2020 RX models. That's in conjunction with technologies like Apple CarPlay and Amazon Alexa. And these seamlessly interact with the optional 12.3 inch touchscreen and the standard eight inch touchscreen. And we'll get into all of that as we jump inside the car, but first let's talk about the models and trim levels offered for the RX. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the different models and trim levels offered here. You do have the RX, the RX Hybrid, an RX F Sport, the F Sport Hybrid, the RX L, and an RX L Hybrid. The hybrids have the 450H moniker, and the non-hybrids have the 350 moniker. And this is true even with the F Sports. You can easily distinguish between the three rows with that L moniker, which is behind either the 350L or the 450H L. And all the hybrid models come in all wheel drive. So what we're driving here is the 2020 Lexus RX 450H L all wheel drive. Now let's start taking a look at the exterior then we'll jump into the hatch and check that out. We'll check out under the hood. We'll jump inside, starting with the third row and moving up. We'll take a look at all the technology in here. Then we'll take it for a drive. Then we'll talk about the price and we'll start wrapping the review up there. The first thing I wanna to touch on here with the exterior is that exterior color. That is Nori Green Pearl. And it's one of two all new colors for the RX model. The other color is Moonbeam Beige Metallic. Both of these were super popular colors with the Lexus UX SUV, and now they have brought it to the RX. Next, looking at the front end design, the RX has a new redesigned front fascia, starting with the signature grille, a symbol of the Lexus brand, and a distinct face of the vehicle. Throughout the vehicle, you have an L motif shown in the grille and the front bumper, as well as the rear, which we'll look at in just a second. New here for 2020, we have these triple beam LED headlamps with cornering lamps and front LED turn signals and fog lamps. Moving along the side here, we do have power folding side mirrors, and these do fold on lock, so you don't have to manually fold them in, which is always a nice luxurious touch for larger SUVs. More on the side profile here, you can see the overall length of the vehicle, and this is the third row, the longer length. We'll talk about the size and dimensions here in just a second, but we also do have your power grab handles and illuminated door handles. You also get your hybrid badge down here. New for 2020 are standard 18 inch wheels, but here we have the 20 inch wheels. And those are 20 inch super chrome alloy wheels with machine finish. Moving along to the rear of the vehicle, you can see those LED tail lights again with the L design emphasized inside them. You also have an updated rear fascia here in the rear as well. The rear fascia here for 2020 has had a slight redesign as well. And as you can see, there is no exhaust port sticking out because this is a hybrid vehicle. They're not emphasizing exhaust. And you can see that RX 450H L badge right here on the hatch. All right, and we are gonna take a look inside that hatch, but first let's talk about the overall dimensions here and compare it to the normal RX model. All right, so first of all, this is not a longer wheelbase than the RX. It's the exact same wheelbase. So both of them are 109.8 inches for the wheelbase. The overall length though is longer. The RXL is 196.9 inches while the RX is 192.5 inches. So that's about four inches longer in the rear for the RXL. And if you're talking about the width of the vehicle, again, it is the same for both the RX and RXL, and that's 74.6 inches. All right, and back to the rear of the vehicle, let's check out the cargo area. This is a power lifting hatch here. 
and you can open it with a touch of a button here, a touch of a button on the keychain, or you do have the kick under pop. All right, and the first thing to mention is that third row, and that is a power folding third row with a touch of a button. You can fold those down and back up, which is cool. We also have a cargo shelf that can be attached as long as the third row is folded down. But let's talk about overall dimensions in here and compare that to the RX. So cargo volume behind the third row is 7.4 cubic feet. And that isn't a lot of space, especially if you're packing in a lot of stuff. The little bit of camera equipment that I have here is actually a bit cramped here behind that third row. So if you plan on using this to haul stuff and people, it's gonna be a little bit tight. If you fold those seats down, you get 23.0 cubic feet of cargo space, while the regular RX only has 16 cubic feet of cargo space. So if you're only needing the two rows, but you need a lot more space in the rear, this one will give you a lot more space behind that second row. And finally, with the second row folded down, everything folded flat. In the RXL, you get 34.1 cubic feet, and the RX, you get 32.6 cubic feet. So again, about two cubic feet more for the L than you do in the RX. I do think the folding action is a little bit interesting with this because it doesn't just fold back, it folds up and then forward and then back. Like I said, interesting, and it probably has a lot to do with the space that they had to uh, fit this third row in there. But with that, let's close this up and take a look under the hood and see what powers the 450H. All right, so this is Lexus's hybrid platform. It's a 3.5 liter V6 engine with two high torque electric drive motor generators. The gas engine pushes 259 horsepower and 247 foot pounds of torque. And combined, you're looking at 308 horsepower. And this is matched up to a CVT. And we'll talk a little bit more about fuel economy when we get behind the wheel, but this setup is rated at 29 miles per gallon city and 28 miles per gallon highway. All right, with that, let's hop in those back seats and start taking a look at the interior of the RX. All right, so first of all, the action for getting into the back row is as simple as pulling up this handle here. You also have a handle here, which you probably can't see on the video that just collapses that uh, front down, but you can push this up and push that forward and you get access to those rear seats. Now there are a few downsides that you might be able to see here through this, that there is not a ton of room behind that second row to the legs of the third row. Even my youngest son couldn't really fit back there. Even with these seats pushed up all the way, they do adjust front and back. But even with those seats pushed up, you really don't have much room for somebody to fit back there. And as you can see, you have those cup holders in the middle here, which is a cool feature but that makes this a six passenger SUV. So you've got two in the front, two in the middle, and two in the rear. And again, while that's a decent configuration, it definitely limits you. So even if you had somebody sitting in the middle of the back row with their feet pushed into the middle of the two front row seats, you couldn't do that. Or if you wanted to fit three in the front, and one in the back. You can't do that with this setup. So to me, that almost makes this third row obsolete. We'll talk a little bit more of that when we talk competition. But if you are looking back here, you do get your own AC controls and vents, which is nice. And again, that cup holder design is pretty cool. I'm not jumping back there to show you anymore, so let's just talk about the second row here. All right, and jumping in the second row is a completely different story. These seats are incredibly comfortable. You have plenty of leg room here, plenty of room for your feet, plenty of headroom here, really a lot of headroom. I'm 6'1", and again, I've got plenty of room here in the second row. Third row again, almost unusable, but let's check out some of the features that you get back here. So you do get your own air vents. These are heated seats back here, and you get two USB ports back here for charging. We also get sunshades. We also get sunshades, which are really helpful. 
Although my kids say that these things give them headaches when they're on and we're going, I've really never had that affect me, but my kids say it for every vehicle. I'm interested if anybody else has had that problem. Leave it in the comments down below and let me know. Another cool thing in the rear seats that my kids enjoyed was this cup holder here that folds out. Always nice to see innovative things like that introduced and they just work. And overall, I think the materials are just as nice back here as they are up in the front, but let's jump up front. Well, let's jump up front, take a look and see what we're working with. All right, so jumping in the front, you can see the very nice interior of this. All RX models now come with the new Lux seating and interior trim. This one here is the Noble Brown semi aniline leather with gray sample wood aluminum trim. So these seats are really nice. They look really good. It's that brown leather with red stitching. They are very comfortable and they are both heated and cooled seats, which you can see with the buttons here behind the gear shifter. Here you can also see that trimming we talked about. It's a really nice look. It is a brown wood with aluminum strips in it. It's pretty cool, but pretty different than what you would see on most vehicles. And I like how it is seamless through this little curve here. And we'll jump into all the details around this interior. But first, let's start off with this Mark Levinson sound system. And it is a 15 speaker premium audio system. You do have two USB charging ports buried back here as, as well as an accessory plug. And in the console, you have another accessory plug as well as two USB ports for the infotainment system and another auxiliary port right here. And that's a lot of USB ports and connectivity, but I am a little bit disappointed we don't get any USB type C ports in here, which are becoming pretty standard nowadays. But uh, if you know anything about Lexus, they lag in technology by a couple of generations. So uh, expect to see one maybe in a couple of years. You do have a smart push button start, and this one is blue because it is the hybrid. We also have your traditional gear shifter here instead of an electronic gear shifter, but you do have an electronic e-brake back here and a hold brake. On the other side of the steering wheel, you do get your auto high beams, the cargo hatch pop, heads up display controls, pop your fuel tank, your 360 camera, which we'll take a look at in a minute, and a heated steering wheel. And that steering wheel is really nice. You've got wood on the top and towards the bottom with nice leather grips. You've got nice uh, controls here. This is all your audio controls, including a touch to talk button. And then the controls for your driver information display and some of your safety features. And then your cruise control settings down here. Now, speaking of that driver information display, it is a small one tucked in between two analog gauges, but you can flip through your menus and get the type of information that you desire. While the driver information display might be a little bit smaller, the uh, infotainment display is not. Now standard on the RX, you get an eight inch display, but this is the available 12.3 inch high resolution split screen multimedia display. And overall, this is a pretty decent and responsive display. It's not necessarily my favorite, but it is a touch screen, which is pretty interesting and your controls outside of the touchscreen is a trackpad here. Now the last RX that I drove still had the little knob that you moved around, joystick kind of thing that you controlled the uh, system with, but now you have a touchpad, which is a little bit more intuitive for people that are used to uh, using touchpads. So one of the things you do have here, like I mentioned before, is Apple CarPlay. You also do have Android Auto for the first time in the RX and that Amazon Alexa integration. I use Apple CarPlay because I have an Apple phone and it works just fine here in the Lexus. Connects well, stays connected, and is easy to navigate with the trackpad. And while we're at it and I've got my phone hooked up, let's take a listen to that Mark Levison sound system. All right, that's good. 
All right, and with that, let's drive this thing, talk about how it drives, the tech in it for driving, some of the hybrid specs here. Then we'll talk about the price and competition and we'll wrap the video up. So let's first talk about this knob that I glazed over when looking at the rest of the interior. This is your drive mode knob. So you have a sport mode here. You also have an eco mode. And when you push in, you just go back to normal mode. Now you also have an EV mode, which if your batteries will let you, will put you in full EV power. And of course over here is a traction control off button, which we basically won't be messing with. The RX crossover for 2020 received several changes designed to enhance the driving dynamics across the lineup. Both front and rear stabilizer bars are now hollow to reduce the weight, yet their thicker diameters and reinforced bushings help to reduce body roll and improve steering response. The shock absorbers have been retuned to work with the stiffer roll bars, while upgraded dampers feature a new friction control device that helps to control high frequency vibrations for a smoother ride. So driving wise, this is a really nice driving SUV. And of course, why wouldn't it be? Lexus makes really nice driving vehicles. It's smooth, it's responsive, it's pretty quiet. It is a hybrid, so you're not hearing that gas engine all the time. You can go into EV mode and really be quiet. And it still has some power behind it. You can do zero to 60 in 8.1 seconds. We won't be testing that out today because who really cares in this thing? But you can get up and go pretty quickly if you need to. Top speed is 112 miles per hour. Again, not really too relevant when driving one of these things, but it is built to take a little bit of speed. You do get that heads up display, which is always nice for driving a vehicle. It allows you to keep your eyes out on the road and still get the information that you need to drive. And you get more than just your speed. You get a compass, you get your power consumption and a couple of little features like that. So it is a quick and responsive vehicle. And that comes down to some of the extra torque that you get from those electric motors. All in all, I have nothing really to complain about on that side. So again, if I did have to complain about something, it would definitely be that third row in the cargo area. You do have a stretched vehicle, but this is definitely a matter of shoehorning a third row into a vehicle that was designed to be a two row and it just doesn't work unless you're really using that third row sparingly. Fuel economy wise, we are averaging 23.7 miles to the gallon, and that's a far cry from the 29 miles per gallon average that we should be seeing. But with reviewing these vehicles, we do let them idle a lot more than usual. We do hit that acceleration pedal a little bit harder than you would just day-to-day -day driving. Really try to put it through its paces, and most of the miles put on this thing have been more backcountry road or highway miles, not really city miles. So in a hybrid, that's gonna hit your fuel economy a lot more than a normal gas engine would. So all in all, I think if you are using this as a daily driver and you are treating it as your daily driver, you'll get a lot better fuel economy than that. But for the week that we've been driving it, that's what we've got. All right, so we're jumping up on the highway. Let's uh, get up here and kick on some of the safety features, some of the radar guided cruise control and lane keeping assist features and see how well they work. And this stretch of the highway is sort of under construction, so it's a good test. Some vehicles work okay here, and a lot don't, but let's uh, turn on the Radar guided cruise control, set it. We're set to a particular distance. Let's change that distance just a little bit. Make sure our lane keeping assist is on. And it has the left hand lane just fine, but not the right. It is struggling a bit, but again, this is a stretch of road under construction. The lines are not particularly uh, 
marked out well, but we're doing just fine with the radar guided cruise control. And it's buzzing to let me know I'm close to the edge, but it's not trying to really steer for me. It does give you little nudges back and forth, let you know when you're more in the center of the lane. All in all, it's a pretty decent system. Not one that uh, impresses me too much, but decent. You do get a lot of that information right there on your heads up display. It's gonna be nearly impossible to film right now, but uh, you do get a lot of good information there. But with that, let's find a place to pull over and we'll talk about the price and some of the competition here and what you should be looking for if you are looking for a luxurious three row SUV. All right, so let's talk about price and competition, starting off with the base RX 350L. That's the non-hybrid, but still the third row. You're looking at $47,300. The RX 450HL has a base price of $50,510. And finally, the full MSRP of what we're sitting in here with the options that we have is $63,340. And that's a pretty respectable price for a luxury three row SUV. But let's talk about some of the competition. All right, so first of all, you have the Mercedes GLE, which I have driven and driven pretty recently. But the one that I drove was the AMG GLE 63S. So it was double the price of this thing, literally double the price of this thing. And it was an amazing vehicle. But if you're talking about comparing this to the base GLE, you're still looking at paying a little bit more for the Lexus, but you're gonna get a little bit more in technology, comfort, and of course that Mercedes badge up front. You also have the BMW X5, which I also have driven recently, but also was the X5 M50i, which was much more expensive than this. But even the base X5, again, you've got a lot of great technology in there and an interior and style that I would definitely choose over the Lexus. Coming back down in price, you could compare this to the Acura MDX. This we've also recently reviewed. And while I really like the MDX, I actually like the RDX a lot more, but that was a two row versus the third row. I had some of the same issues with that that I have of this thing is that that third row just isn't big enough for me if you're looking at a family three row SUV. Now, if you are looking at family three row SUVs, you could also look at the Infiniti QX60. And that I think for the family three row SUV and its price is one of the best bang for the bucks that you can get. It's a good size. It has plenty of room for the family. Even in that third row, you still get room in the rear for it and you're still driving a pretty luxurious vehicle. And I have reviewed that as well. So uh, definitely check the description. I'll try to put as many links down there as possible if you're looking at competition for this thing. Another one that I've reviewed kind of recently is the uh, Cadillac X-T6. Also the X-T5 could kind of compete with this, but that X-T6 is the third row SUV there, luxurious family, three row. And if you're looking at an American brand, it's definitely one of the best that you can get there. It really competes with those German and Asian companies. You also have the Audi Q7, the Volvo CX90, and the Jaguar F-Pace. I haven't really driven any of those three recently, so I'm not gonna touch on too much on those, although I really do like that Volvo. But if I really wanted to talk about some of my favorite family three-row SUVs that aren't really considered luxurious SUVs, I would be talking about the Volkswagen Atlas and the Hyundai Palisade. Now the Volkswagen Atlas comes in some pretty luxurious trims. You can get the price north of $50,000 for those. And as far as size, it's one of the biggest three row SUVs you can get without going full blown truck platform expedition or Tahoe kind of look. And then the Hyundai Palisade, I've driven it a few times. It's a really great family three row SUV and some of its trims are exceptionally luxurious for being a Hyundai. I would definitely check it out if you're looking at this Lexus. With that, let's jump out of the vehicle and wrap this thing up. All right, guys, well, I hope you did enjoy that video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the RX 450H or the RX in general, or the L version of the RX. Leave me comments down below. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. And with that, guys, thanks for watching.
All right, guys, well, before I completely leave you for this one, let me quickly pitch TXGarage.com. Go check out TXGarage.com if you haven't already. We've got a lot of written articles over there by a lot of different contributors. We have written reviews, written news stories, uh, written adventure stories, written event coverage, plus all of the videos we do here on the Tex Garage channel. We also have a Locals community. Locals is kind of like Patreon if you haven't heard of it. It's a way that you can get some behind the scenes or some extra uh, footage with us, some extra personal conversation with the writers and authors of Texas Garage, including myself. And it's free to sign up, but there is a paid level to get that exclusive content. So if you're interested, please go check it out. And if you do decide to join one of the paid memberships, we greatly appreciate it. And with that, I promise that's the end. Thanks again for watching, guys.